What's up everyone? In this video, I want to share with you three things that a lot of billionaires have in common. Now, that doesn't mean every single billionaire is like this. When you're looking at over a thousand people, there's always exceptions and different people who do different stuff. But these three things can really get you far. The first thing, frugality. Now, a lot of millionaires have this too, but they extend this to their personal life. A great book on this is The Millionaire Next Door. It's really well known. It's uh, decades old and basically they studied uh, very scientifically thousands of millionaires and they found that all of them surprisingly live very frugal lives. They uh, drive very cheap modest cars and they do a lot of things that are very frugal to save money and invest it for the future which is how they became millionaires. And that's just blew my mind because I'm thinking, wow, I assume that they, you know, drive fancy sports cars and all this stuff. But it turns out that that 1% really, you know, changes the stereotype because those are the ones who are most flashy about it. That 1% of flashy millionaires with those sports cars and show off their money, they give actual millionaires a bad rep. Now, for billionaires, frugality is... Uh, very similar but it's highly emphasized on their business for example Jeff Bezos like if you read the everything store and assuming that's a accurate account of how Jeff Bezos works uh, which I think it is because the author interviewed a lot of people who knew Jeff really well like hundreds of employees and uh, close relatives as well as Jeff himself this guy like he is so frugal with his business literally there's so many things he did to make sure every single cent was saved uh, to an extent where I think it might have been overdone because I think he may have sacrificed a bit on taking care of his employees over uh, saving a dime here and there. For example, he literally blew up when he saw a television in the break room. And this was when Amazon was already like a billion dollar company. He blew up because there's a television in the break room and no one told him before they bought it. And he thought it was an unnecessary expenditure. And then another time, uh, he wouldn't pay for parking tickets or bus tickets for his employees because he thought it was unnecessary and he would, thought it would encourage his employees to stay there longer rather than go home. And then a third time, he met with another huge big company, Walmart. I mean, this is a multi-billion dollar industry, um, multi-billion dollar company, one of the best in the world. And he met with the top executives and they chose to eat at a restaurant that cost 20 bucks a meal max. And then Walmart paid for a very modest hotel for them to stay at when they came to visit. It was like a $50 a night hotel. So these were like billion dollar companies. Now, um, you might think that's extreme, but I think the truth of the matter is that most companies uh, are on the opposite side. They spend on useless stuff. They'll buy a thousand dollar marble table for the receptionist desk just because they can. And that type of inefficiency really uh, ruins your business in a way in the long term. That brings us to number two. The second thing that billionaires do better than normal people. They think about the long term. So what does that mean? They're really long term thinkers. They really will care and uh, think about what's long term. And even if you look at some hundred million dollar companies, they won't do this. Why? Because they're too influenced by the, what you know other stock market investors and the general public and uh, CNBC or any other news outlet will say about them. So they focus on quarterly earnings or annual earnings. And what ends up happening? They follow a short-sighted approach and they end up pumping up their earnings for that quarter and sacrificing their long-term goal. You know, with Jeff Bezos or Warren Buffett, um, they're both very, very long-term focused and uh, I can see why all of these people get along. Warren Buffett invests in Walmart. He loves Bezos, quotes Bezos a lot. He's met with Bezos. Bezos loves Walmart. He reads, um, he's read uh, the founder's book and carries it around like a Bible. 
uh, they're all very similar in nature. And uh, Warren Buffett is one of the, I would say he was always one of the only people in the insurance industry who is like this. And I think it's very hard to do because you have all this peer pressure. Um, but every time in his shareholder letters, even back when he was just starting out, he would say, all the other insurance companies are doing it this way. And yes, this year, they will have higher reported earnings than we will. And in fact, this year, we're losing money. But in the long term, we will succeed because we're looking at it in the long term and we're investing. And this isn't the best approach for the short term, but it is for the long term. And so that type of perspective really sets you apart to make billions in the long term while everyone else is trying to please people that they shouldn't care to please anyways. And uh, that's what a lot of successful people are like. Third and final point of billionaires. Third thing is that they are willing to get on the ground floor and do what everyone else is doing. Even if it's the lowest meager low level task if they, it has to be done they will do it and this goes back to napoleon hill napoleon hill he studied 500 of the wealthiest people on earth billionaire magnates like uh andrew carnegie and henry ford and he did it in person for 25 plus years now one of his lessons in his books that he discovered from studying all these people is that leaders are willing to do anything that any of their followers are asked to do because how can a leader lead if they're unwilling or above doing what they ask their followers to do? That's a surefire way for your followers to uh, build resentment and leave you. So whether you're talking Sam Walton, who has made hundreds of millions of dollars for Walmart, probably more than anyone alive ever, or Warren Buffett or Jeff Bezos, these people are willing to do these things. That's not saying that they would like to, but they are willing to go the extra mile. I think Jeff Bezos is probably the best example of this. Um, and one time, they were under uh, stocked in terms of employees. They didn't have enough people to do the work. So he got out there and he started, you know, packaging these things up and shipping them himself along with everyone else. And this was when uh, Amazon was pretty... Uh, not as big as it is now, but pretty big. And it was a critical thing that they had to get shipped. And it was very important. Uh, and some of his employees were shocked that he was willing to do that. But uh, it wasn't above him. And it really helped because it was a critical part of a cri critical area of their business at the time. And Sam Walton is probably the number one person at this. I mean, this guy was, he had made billions. And was he uh, on a yacht? Was he driving a fancy sports car? No, this guy, instead, he decides to spend the day sitting in a truck with other truck drivers. And this is in his book. And he spent the whole day just driving across the country just to f experience what his truck drivers were like. And trying to figure out how they lived, what they could do better, how it could be more efficient. And he did all sorts of stuff like this. Like he would spend his days um, just going about it in a uh, you know, very ordinary life situation. And that means he would go to competitor stores, he would write notes, he would go into different stores and see how things are done. And of course he would go to the front lines with his employees and figure out what could be done better, what is not as efficient as it could. And in the case of the truck drivers, see how they were living their lives and how their lives could be improved because if uh, the truck driver's experience is worse than um, it could be and they're not having a good time doing it, that's huge because uh, a big part of Walmart's infrastructure was them driving their trucks so i just found all this very interesting and does this mean that you have to save every penny and everything that you have and be super frugal and um not have fun in life not exactly i mean i would say these are extreme examples because a lot of these people i mentioned were sort of genetically wired to love 
uh, being out on the front lines and helping their business more than they were, you know, spending that money on yachts and stuff like that. So you can definitely have a lot of fun and maybe not go to that extreme, um, but still uh, have a sense of the right direction so that you don't go overboard with uh, frugality or thinking of the short term or any of those other things. Hopefully this video helped and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.